Okay, this is a 1992 Thomas T133. What we're working on today is we got to do a seal kit on this torque motor because this is draining into the crankcase, which is then escaping out into the through this axle seal that needs to be redone. So what I've done so far is just taking the wheels off, taking all these bolts off, drain this out a little bit, just because it was uh, a little too full, and then uh, loosen this adjustment off here. 15 16 bolts, 15 16 loosen it all off to take tension off the chains. And now we're gonna consult our repair manual to figure out what to do next. The next step it calls for is to remove the two nuts from the handbrake module, which is on the rear side of the engine, or the skid steer of the torque motor, rear side of the torque motor. They're kind of hidden there, mine were covered in grease. So there's the torque motor there, two bolts are here. And now we got to remove the handbrake. I had to use the pry bar to pull the hydraulic return line from the torque motor back so I could at least get a uh, wrench in there. It's a 9 16 wrench and two, uh, just a nut and a lock washer and then a flat washer. But mine were silicone for some reason so my flat washers aren't coming off. Okay, there's a, oh, there we go. There is a bar that goes across here that has the two bolts welded together. You pull it out, then you can pull the whole handbrake assembly off. You undo this bolt, and then everything comes off as one unit. I did it in two steps where I undid a cotter pin, but you undo this bolt first, and then you can pull everything apart. Next step is we're going to take a Allen wrench, take uh, this whole disc assembly off, which is kind of damaged a little bit because for once in a while it gets left with the handbrake on, that's what happens. And then, uh, then we'll be able to access this castle nut. Okay, I got the brake disc removed. It is a four millimeter Allen wrench. And then one of them was a 532nd. Really strange. I think someone had done work on this previous, to be honest with you. Um, I don't have the right socket for this. This is a two and three sixteenths inch socket. So I gotta go find one. And then in the repair manual it says to thread a bolt through the sprocket into the final drive housing to prevent torque motor from turning. Well, I'm not really sure where you thread a bolt in because there's no picture in the freaking repair manual. So, yeah. Oh, I see. Right here. You thread a bolt from here into this little nut. That keeps everything taut so you can turn that. Okay. So I gotta go get a socket. I ended up getting the sprocket off. If you're just gonna remove the torque motor to access anything else on a T133, the sprocket will fit through this hole, but as I am completely doing all the seals in this pump, I took the sprocket off while it's on the machine, so it's a lot easier to remove. I ended up using a split flange puller, which is quite large, and it took quite a bit of force to get it off. It finally popped, but uh, my whole entire weight was going onto the two bolts that were pulling it apart. Used a chunk of brass on here so I didn't damage anything. Now I gotta disconnect everything on the bottom and start pulling it out. <clears throat> I took the skid plate off here so it's easier to access there the two supply lines and then a drain line. Uh, yeah, we'll start disconnecting everything. The two main. Uh, drive hoses are inch and a quarter on the 
on the, uh, I think it's JIC. I think it's JIC. And then uh, I'm not sure on the ORB. The ORB is probably inch and a half, inch and three quarter, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna loosen these off and drain the drain the hoses. Cause it's gonna be full of oil. Oh, you don't want to let go, do you? Do yourself a favor. If you've got any caps and plugs, these are just JIC plugs and stuff. They're fairly cheap at a hydraulic supply store. Put some on so you don't get dirt in your motor. I ran out, so I had to make my own using a coupling and some MBT fittings and stuff. Uh, I usually I have a smattering of them from your usual suspects, as Av would say, the Big Rock Canyon Mountain. Uh, here's some nice little ones for what I'm going to do up top. You got that drain line up there. Yeah, one more uh, fitting up there, and we'll uh, ready to drop this thing. Yeah, this top drain line on the front motor. It's easier access from up top from, from the looks of it. So we're gonna undo it. It looks like a 916, but it's probably like a half inch or something weird. The rear motor is on the bottom, so let's uh disconnect it. And I think that's it for uh things. Well I was completely wrong, it's eleven sixteenths, kind of a weird size, but uh oh well. Let's get her off. On mine, I had to get a second wrench in here because the ORB fitting below was spinning. So, you know, there's not a lot of room to work on here. As you can clearly see. And wow, cause you fuck. So, uh, yeah, you gotta keep flopping your wrench around just to get a little bit of a turn on it. This is why. <sighs> it's the only drawback of skid steers. Everything's in such tight spots. Okay, I got the drain line off and capped. My caps, the threads start a little bit too late, so couldn't quite get it on. It's it's on there enough that it's not going to get dirt in there. But uh, yeah, make sure your plug has some more threads in it, because uh, yeah, could be that the Ferrol is too far out and it's not compressing all the way. So I'll have to figure that out. Sounds like a layer me project. Anyways, the inside bolt on here appears to be a 15 16 so they're both three quarter. I think they're both three quarter. Yeah, they're both three quarter. So they're all double nutted. Time to start taking them off. Once you loosen all the bolts, I uh, pulled it this way, rotated it counterclockwise so the fittings were on the bottom, and I was able to turn it this way, and then have the back end slide out the bottom there. Um, I don't know if this is a replaced hose or not. It's painted orange, so I think this is factory, so it was flexible. Hopefully yours is, and that's how I was able to get it out. If not, I would have to pull it up towards me, which is not a big deal, but it's stinking heavy, so I just use gravity in my favor. I'm probably going to put it in this way, but, uh, yeah, thing's freaking heavy. So I got to clean up all around where it goes in, so that way it's nice and clean, all that fun stuff. There she is in all her glory. A Charlin model 112 pump or gear motor, I guess. Time to get some seals for it. I don't think it's ever been a part, so time to do a seal kit.